Good morning, this is the Plug Seeker. Welcome to another episode. Now today will be my third episode looking at my experiences of driving a Tesla Model S for the weekend. And do check out my channel for my two earlier episodes. In the first episode, I picked up the Tesla and gave my first impressions of what it was like to drive. And in the second episode, I did an in-depth review of the Tesla Supercharger Network and I gave it a go myself. So in this final episode, just before I unfortunately had to give back the Tesla, I had a chance to give it a good look over in my driveway and uh, play with some of the controls. And at the end, I'll give my thoughts on what it was like to drive a Tesla for the weekend from the point of view of a Nissan Leaf driver. If you're not already, please consider subscribing to my channel and I hope you enjoy the episode. So this is the main center screen as all Tesla drivers will be used to. And obviously there's far too much on this um, display that I could possibly go into in one uh, small weekend. And those of you that have got Teslas obviously are very familiar by now. But suffice to say you have a large central console here and everything is on it. Really this is the only thing on the main uh, console. There's no other buttons at all in the whole car. Um, the only other console you've got is this head ups uh, display here, uh, which uh, seems to change depending on what um, things you've selected, such as navigate. Um, the, uh, on the right hand side, you're the average kilowatt hours per mile that you're using. Um, and in the middle of the screen there is the picture of the car. That middle picture where the car is will change to the um, display of uh, the computer that shows what cars or other vehicles are near you and your position in the road and so forth um, and on the left will display things like the music if you're playing music or the navigating small map which is a second map there's a main map that's on the main screen but also when you're navigating a smaller map which is straight in front of you comes up here which is quite handy as I said before um, but everything else is on this massive main console that basically looks like a huge iPad, as I'm sure many Tesla owners here are very um, used to. Um, you press the right button here with a picture of the car, and it brings you up a lot of the general information. Here you can open the, the frunk, 
as you can see there you can also open the charging flap although as i showed yesterday if you're using a supercharger you can actually just press a button on the supercharger uh, itself and it opens up the flap for you um, but you can open up using this as well you can also open the boot otherwise i showed you, you can also open it from the outside manually uh, that's the display um, brightness and so on um, loads of different options down here in terms of navigation uh, autopilot settings um, and also quite handy down here you've got the full tesla manual so you can read through that so instead of having to search around your glove box for a manual you've got everything there that's really handy you've got suspension adjusting of the lights uh autopilot settings here um shows you all the different settings of the autopilot when you're using it uh vehicle okay so again more settings there showing you things like auto wipers auto mirror tilt uh, i noticed the auto mirror tilt um incidentally when you're reversing i noticed the mirrors change to a slightly different angle which i thought was a nice touch driving now this is useful this is the general driving mode you've got I, for the whole of the duration of this trip i had it in standard mill in standard mode for acceleration but you can have a more gentle acceleration called chill mode which might be good for people um, of a nervous disposition whilst they're getting used to the acceleration um steering mode again i had it in standard but there's also a comfort or a sport um i i couldn't say for how much that changes the driving uh, i didn't really have time to experiment with that and regenerative braking strength you've got standard or low i had it in standard uh it felt a little bit more bite than the leaf but to be honest i felt it was less bite than i had when i had a i free for a week um the but you can go into a lower regenerative braking but for me i actually found the regen braking quite comfortable once i got used to it to be honest um yeah it was just right for me um stopping mode you can have creep which is uh very similar to what i have in the leaf whereas it'll slow down on regenerative braking and then keep up a very gradual sort of four miles an hour type creep i find that quite handy to be honest in traffic and things but you've also got roll mode and hold stopping which I believe will bring you to a complete stop using the regen a bit like the iPedal does in the uh, in the leaf let's have a look through some of the other quick things and on the trips menu uh, it shows you recent trips that's quite handy if you're looking at being interested in your stats shows you the distance traveled the total kilowatt hours of energy used and your average energy use per mile um, so that's quite interesting, useful if you're interested. Uh, navigation, automatic, okay, different this different navigation routes, including avoiding tolls and things. Uh, I won't go into that too much. Um, this and the security and safety, you've got things like your sentry mode. Again, I didn't set that on and I haven't used that while I've been. And speed limit, you can limit your maximum speed. That's uh, useful okay and uh, that's about all really uh and service okay that shows you what things i think are due for service and things so again i won't go into that software okay this shows you exactly which um software you've got up to date and it also shows you information about m the car i had which was the model s long range and uh it gives you information on the vin and so forth and it shows you that there is an update available Anyway, you can connect to Wi-Fi and you can update the software. And again, this has been one of the big selling points of the Tesla. Not only can you have uh, the Tesla supercharger network, which is brilliant, but also you can update software overnight while you sleep. And when you get up, your car is smarter and it's improved and they've updated software. They've improved any bugs and they've made the, uh, the car just a little bit better, hopefully overnight. Uh, some manufacturers are moving, I think, towards having automatic over-the-air updates, but really Tesla is the best example, really, I think, of this at the moment. So uh, other quick options. You've got your aircon and all the options there for aircon control, and you can also control the individual heated seats, uh, and that's obviously very nice, very individualized controls. And if you press this, in, uh, if you press this icon here, brings up things like the toy box entertainment you've got the internet you can connect to the web um 
it's a camera mode and you got ah, there you go so you, you can bring up your reverse camera and actually I the reverse camera was very impressive I have to say if you look at that that is really nice quality picture and uh, and you need it because this is a big car um, you are maneuvering a very big car on uh, small parking spaces designed for much smaller UK vehicles so having the all-round sensors uh, which give you a very clear indication of what's near you and having a very nice clear camera and also you have the mirrors which adjust nicely uh, to a different orientation to uh, improve your view when you're reversing and then as I say they go back to normal uh, position afterwards so that is also very nice um, the sat navigation is up here and you can uh, type in where you want to go um, or you can just press somewhere in the map and hold it so if I press down the map it says do I want to go there and you can just navigate now I found if you press the electric symbol it shows you your battery a nice pictorial form and you can see here it's about 50% in the battery um, and this is shows you here you can set the limit to what you want to charge up to as a maximum quite simply and as you can see here it's set at the moment to about 85% you could have that to 100% or you could just decide to charge to about 50% it's up to you uh, I'll leave it where it was about 80% which was about 280 miles so if you go to display and you scroll up it shows you here down here energy display either in distance which is what we had yesterday um, when we were charging but you can show it in energy as you would um, in the leaf when you were looking at the battery so if I now go back to the battery um, which would be up here so as you can see it now displays in terms of percentage and as I said it shows you it's 51% at the moment which is going to be probably more than enough for what I need now as described earlier I'm going to show you how the adaptive cruise control and autopilot work and if you look just behind here so if you come around to the side, as I say, you can see this, which is the indicator and also does the wipers. And and then you've got this one here, which I think is probably the light dipper, but uh, you can tell me down below on the comments. And here is the one that controls the adaptive cruise control and the autopilot. And if I bring it around to the front, you can see that a little better. You can press down or up to uh, set the adaptive cruise control um, again thanks to James and others who showed me that you can adjust the distance between you and the car in front by twisting this lever and as you can see as I twist the lever here on the display it shows you how many car widths you are happy to be between you and the car in front when you're using the adaptive cruise control okay so I set it actually about uh, five or six car lengths, which actually then felt more comfortable than it did when it was first set. Um, to engage the autopilot, you just simply bring it towards you twice like that. And when you do, you hear a ding and a blue light with a little um, steering wheel appears on the main dash. Um, if you make any small movements yourself of the steering wheel, it will detect that and come out of the um, autopilot. Um, same way if you indicate to change lanes, it'll come out of autopilot. Um, anyway, you soon get used to that actually. So that just about wraps up my weekend uh, driving the, the Tesla Model S. Um, I have absolutely loved it, as I'm sure you could tell from my videos. It is an outstanding uh, car and I can see firsthand now really why people rave so much about Teslas um, really I think every car should be as good as this okay yes the performance was spectacular the internal computer uh, is is brilliant or oh, it's so intuitive it's uh, just like your iPad and you can control every aspect of the car all from one console it is brilliant um, it's very very comfortable obviously it is a luxury car um, and it has to be one of the most amazing cars I have ever driven that being said I have not driven many <laughs> many cars of this standard so uh, yeah um, there were as well as the brilliant 
things in terms of performance and style and quality. There were the other little things that really um, were nice. Um, little things like when I was reversing, we noticed the two side ca the two side mirrors just adjusted their position a little bit to optimize the view. Great little thing. And so that combined with the back camera gives you a good image when you're looking backwards. And other little things like you've got the, the key in your pocket, that's all you need. As you walk towards the door, the doors offer themselves to open. Uh, and when you walk away, the car locks itself automatically. Um, I noticed at night, when I went to uh, open the doors, a little light um, comes up illuminating the handle. Again, nice little touches like that. The car's console is internet enabled, so you can check your emails, you could do anything you needed to as if you had your own iPad in the car. Uh, it's brilliant. Um, what else can we say? It's got a frunk, handy. You've got this nice little space at the front and you have got literally acres of space in the back and that's without even putting the back seats down i think if you put those back seats down i could probably lie in that back i mean it's amazing in fact i do know there are people that have put double mattresses in and slept in their teslas um so you have got tons of space so what did it feel like accelerating in the tesla well I did a few kind of brief launches um, within the legal speed limit. And yes, it was incredible. I mean, you can feel it in your throat. The excitement is like being on a roller coaster when you press that accelerator down hard. Um, but uh, cheap thrills aside, um, the added acceleration is practically very useful on the motorway. I found it very useful when changing lanes. So if I wanted to go from, let's say, 60 to 70 to overtake somebody, it was extremely easy and comfortable to do. Um, um, using the adaptive cruise control and the autopilot was a very interesting experience. Um, when I first left and the video you saw when I was driving away, um, when I picked up the Tesla, um, the setting of the distance between the cars was, I think, three or four um, lengths of a car. Uh, I found that just a little bit uncomfortably close from the way I would normally drive on the motorway. Thanks to my YouTube friends for showing me how to adjust that option. And when I switched it up to five or six distances on the options, that felt much more comfortable for my normal driving. Um, the Adaptive cruise control was really comfortable and it, it really took some of the strain out of um, a motorway journey. Um, it um, comfortably adjusted the distance when people moved into my lane um, and it was really, really good. The autopilot, I was a little bit unsure about. I found that when we were on a really perfectly straight motorway, um, I was comfortable allowing the autopilot to do the controls with my hands just very loosely on the steering wheel and it kept the lane nicely along with the adaptive cruise control. However, I did find at times a little disconcerting. I think when I first turn on the autopilot, if you're not exactly in between the two lanes, it does a little shift to move you. And that feels uncomfortable when I, would, as, a, as somebody who's never used um, uh, an autopilot, because it felt like the car was moving me to the side. And often I would just automatically uh, just take control again. So that was a little odd. And if there were any um, roads which are in any way windy or bendy, then uh, again, I just, I just I kept feeling I, I should take control. Um, and I think, it's possibly because I haven't had enough experience driving it. I think on a long straight motorway, it would be very, very useful. Um, and I think possibly if I'd had more time with it, I would have got more comfortable. There is an element of somebody who's never used an autopilot of feeling slightly uncomfortable about letting the control be under the computer. Um, but I mean, a marvelous, ingenious bit of software, it, it really is. Um, so that was that was only my brief opinions of the autopilot. But again, I'm sure many Tesla drivers who use it regularly can tell me in the comments uh, how much they get used to it after a, after a little while. One other thing that I did notice a couple of times when I was driving in smaller roads uh, in the country is that this was a big car and 
it did feel big on those smaller roads. I think the Model 3 would probably feel more comfortable to me. And if I was to get a Tesla, it would probably be the Model 3, I think. One thing I noticed was the sort of uh, automatic, I think it's some sort of collision detection. When the cars were coming close on those country roads, they weren't so close that they were ever putting me in any danger. But there were one or two times where the car engaged brakes automatically and suddenly slowed me down which did feel uncomfortable because I knew I was in control of the car at the time. Um, I don't know if I'd inadvertently engaged um, something there, but yeah, it did a couple of times slow down relatively suddenly because I think it thought the car in the other lane was getting too close, even though I knew on the country road that I had enough space. So yeah, that that was a little bit, um, That was it only happened once or twice, but when it did happen, it felt a bit strange. And obviously I wouldn't want somebody too far behind me uh, if the car was to suddenly start to, to break. Again, those who are routine Tesla drivers can tell me more about that. And uh, possibly I may have had some settings on to, uh, that could be altered for that. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. As I say, I am not a motor uh, journalist and I'm not an expert on cars. This is an honest review of somebody who has driven a Nissan Leaf for seven years and giving you my opinion on what I found it like to drive a Tesla Model S for a weekend. I have only touched on some of the options and some of the uh, controls of the car. Um, and obviously you would need much more than a weekend to really look, have an in-depth look at all the things this car can do. Um, has this weekend changed how I think of Tesla? Well, yes, uh, it's inevitable. I think you really, have to try one of these cars and sit in one and drive one to really have a feel for what they are like. And yes, mm, I have got a Tesla grin, no doubt about it. And yes, I would love to have one of these cars. A bit out of the budget really at the moment. Um, in the future, if I can find a decent used one uh, in good quality, then you might start to see my episodes in a Tesla instead of a, a Nissan Leaf in the future. Who knows? Um, it definitely has um, opened my mind to what it's like to drive a Tesla. And yes, um, we'll see. Maybe, uh, maybe I will get one if I can find a way of making that Tesla stretch, as they call it. So that's it for this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please don't forget to share it on Twitter, Facebook, or whatever social media you use. It really does help out my channel a lot and I really do appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also don't forget to click the notification bell to get new episodes as soon as I upload them. So that's it for today and from the inside of a beautiful Tesla Model S, this is the Plug Seeker signing out. Happy charging everyone.